Hello, Squirrel Tribe. Welcome back. So today we're bringing Kentucky into the conversation in regards to water safety and messed up events, adding them now to the list of Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New Jersey, Maryland, running out of hands here, Texas, Indiana, Michigan, North Dakota, California, and many more, probably every single state in the great old U.S. of A. Now, Speaking of Ohio, there is now an internal investigation uh, at the EPA in regard to the handling of the February 3rd Norfolk Southern train derailment and crap show that has ensued since. And since we're bringing up East Palestine um, and the crap show, which involved the purposeful release and burn of five tankers full of vinyl chloride into the soil of East Palestine, Ohio, Baltimore has now shut down the request from the EPA and Norfolk Southern to take the 675,000 gallons of contaminated chemical crap trash water that uh, they were supposed to be taking. We talked about this a couple of videos ago. I'll put a link to that later. Y'all can watch that. We also, y'all need to talk about how Ohio is definitely up to something when it comes to their eastern border, the Ohio-Pennsylvania border area. There is something happening over there or there's a plan for something to happen over there, not just regarding East Palestine, Ohio, but uh, or Columbiana County, but counties above and below it as well. And I'll explain that to you. Um, but first, we're going to talk about what has happened in the Ohio River in Kentucky. Now, Ohio River has been in the news way too often, way too much lately. Um, but at least I don't know if that's the right words. At least this time it's not in Ohio, it's in Kentucky, but I don't know that that makes it any better. You don't want the crap just jumping from state to state, right? But unfortunately that's what has happened here. Let me just show you a real quick picture of what we've got going on. These are the barges that are now just chilling up against the McAlpine uh, Dam, Lock and Dam in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, if you will. So this is what happened. 10 barges, including one carrying methanol, break free from a tugboat on the Ohio River. It says three barges were pinned against structures, including a dam facility, after 10 became loose on the river in Louisville, Kentucky, officials have said. Uh, it says here, the one transporting ethanol or methanol had 1,400 tons of methanol on it. The three were part of a group of 10 that broke free from their tugboat around 2 a.m. on Tuesday after it hit the structure at the entrance to the Portland Canal near the river's McAlpine Locks and Dam, Louisville's emergency management agency said in a statement. One barge remained attached and all except for the one carrying methanol were transporting soy, uh, soybean oil and corn, the agency said. There is currently zero evidence of a tank breach or any leaks and air and water monitoring resources are in place, according to the statement. Uh, the situation prompted officials to limit traffic on the river as state and federal agencies responded and tried to remove the three barges. Coast Guard spokesperson Chris Davis has said downriver down traffic has been stopped and nearby locks that had reopened after earlier closings would most likely close again overnight as officials reassess the situation. This was uh, from yesterday. We had shut down traffic, Davis said. There's going to be salvage operations and it's going to be dangerous. The Louisville Water Co. said that the incident was downriver from its intake and therefore there has been no impact on the city's drinking water. Silver lining, I guess you could say. Silver lining. No impact on that city's drinking water. But if the water's flowing down and there is a leak that they may not see, that just means that somebody's municipal water is going to get hit at some point. I mean... It just, it just flows down to the next city, right? That's how it works. Uh, according to this, your water is safe to drink in Louisville, Kentucky. The seven other barges that broke loose were recovered earlier by other vessels in the area, according to the Army Corps of Engineers. No injuries have been reported. And then it wants you to know that methanol is used in windshield washer fluid, gas line antifreeze, carburetor cleaner, copy machine fluid, perfumes, and other products. Part of a group of toxic alcohols, the chemical can be extremely dangerous to humans if ingested and can result in death, coma, and respiratory and circulatory failure, according to a white paper on the chemical published by federal health officials. Sorry, my nose itches. The Coast Guard is investigating the cause of the crash that freed the barges. Now, <laughs> sorry, again, nose itch. I just want to point out, just want to point out, perfume. Ladies, a lot of us wear perfume, but it also is going to be in men's cologne. And according to this, it's extremely flammable and it's toxic and we should probably not breathe it in. So maybe we should all maybe think about stepping back from perfumes and colognes for just a little while and see if 
that helps any of us feel any better. If anybody's been feeling icky lately and use a lot of perfume or cologne, put two and two together, step back, smell a little less fragrancy, I guess, for a while, but see if it improves your health. So you guys, you might not know this, but this is not the first time that a um, barge derailment, I don't know if that's the right word, but a, a, a barge has been capsized, overturned, whatever the right word is here, um, at the McAlpine Dam. <laughs> it's just fun to say. Uh, here's a picture of what it's supposed to look like. So this is where the tugboats pull the barges through at the McAlpine Dam. Lock and dam is what they call it. That's where they pull the boats through. This is a far away picture of what is exactly is happening. Those are the three barges that are still stuck there up against this portion of the dam, all the water going around it. But what I want to tell you guys about is in 2019, there was actually another, uh, Sub, like submersion, submersion, I think that's the right word. Environmental concerns raise a seventh barge sinks into the Ohio River after crash. This was in January of 2019, just FYI. So the Coast Guard said a seventh coal barge now sits at the bottom of the Ohio River after a towboat crash on Christmas Day. 15 barges broke loose after the towboat Debbie Graham crashed into the Second Street Bridge. Seven of the barges sank and the remaining collected at the McAlpine Dam just above the falls of Ohio. Some are partially underwater and one is lodged in the dam gate. <laughs> dam gate. Um, the Coast Guard said salvage teams with heavy equipment could arrive as early as Wednesday night. None, none, none of that matters. But here, it says here, um, no, no, could lose some fish because of coal. Oh, that's what it is. He said, he, this guy said he's been fishing in Ohio for 30 years, which... Ew. Um, and is concerned about the impact of the tons of coal dumped into the river. He could lose fish, according according to this Tomlin guy. He says, we could lose fish. He says, I think you could see some fish species that are driven away from it just because it is the introduction of a new substance in the river and it disrupts their normal behavior, according to Flickner, uh, director of the environmental group Lower Ohio Valley Waterkeeper. Um, Flickner said, since the coal is in the solid rock form, the biggest impact will not be on water quality, but to life that exists on the riverbed itself, which is still rather important if you ask me. Life is life, whether it's yours, mine, the little fishies, the dog that's laying by my feet, a cat somewhere, a bird in a tree. Life is life. And if we are polluting it to the, to the point where it's affecting any form of life, then we're doing something wrong, right? And so you have how many barges full of coal sitting at the bottom of the Ohio River and now the same spot that a uh, barge of soybean oil and corn and methanol are sitting. Now they keep saying that there's been no, no breach, no leak, no whatever else, but y'all, are they, are they scuba diving up underneath that? I mean, one of those uh, containers up against the bridge is crumpled. It's not intact anymore. Whatever was in there can easily just seep out as far as I can tell from the pictures. I'm not a barge expert or how they um, contain all this stuff, but if it's crumpled and it's open and it's broken, there's a possibility of seepage. That's kind of how it works. And I don't know if that's the one that happens to be the methanol, if that's corn or if that's soybean oil, preferably corn. We'd prefer it to be the corn. Then the little fishies could just eat some corn unless of course corn kills little fishies and then hopefully they don't eat it. Either way, anytime there is something that happens in the water, it's a big deal. Whether something leaks or not, now you have extra boats coming in, dumping whatever fuel they use or exhaust or whatever into the water, trying to get to these barges to pull them out. There, there's other aspects of it besides just what's leaking from these barges. There's still stuff that's getting into the water and that's what is important or what matters. So let me go back to this. Hold on one second. So that's not the first one. Here's a um, picture of those coal barges. This Again, this is 2019 and it's just ironic that the word, if I can move this thing, the word above it literally says danger on the bridge, literally says danger. But those are the coal barges and they're just, that's just coal willy nilly, just chilling out in the open. I don't guess it matters if it rains in open barges like this. I don't guess it matters if there's rain or whatever else, but I mean, that seems very easy. If you hit a wave or a something and you tip, it's easy for coal to literally just spill out. There's no cover on these things, nothing like that at all which doesn't seem very smart or safe in my opinion, but what do I know? Um, okay, so y'all, at the same time that this is happening in Kentucky, good old Kentucky, uh, today, today, March 28th, because that's today, is the 28th, uh, the Attorney General Daniel Cameron um, leads a 19-state coalition opposing the EPA's excessive regulation of air quality standards. I need you to hear that. 
At the same time that Kentucky is having an issue with possible maybe methanol being leaked into the Ohio River in their area or soybean oil or corn, they are also fighting against cleaner air for the state. Let me read this to you. This came out today. It says, Attorney General Daniel Cameron today led a 19-state coalition in a letter opposing the Environmental Protection Agency's EPA proposed rule arguing this policy would have would harm the economies of energy states like Kentucky by imposing excessive regulations for air quality standards. As Americans face record high inflation, the Biden administration is pushing extreme policies that would harm the economies of energy states like Kentucky, said Attorney General Cameron. The United States has some of the cleanest air in the industrialized world, and this regulation prioritizes President Biden's radical climate agenda ahead of the livelihoods of hardworking Americans. We're going to have a couple comments after this, just FYI. The Clean Air Act directs the EPA to propose air quality standards for certain pollutants to protect public health. In 2020, the EPA made a well-reasoned decision not to adjust the existing national ambient air quality standards. But after a 2021 executive order by President Biden, the EPA decided to reconsider its decision. In their letter, the attorneys, uh, the attorneys general argue that the proposed rule exceeds the EPA's authority and is merely an attempt to advance President Biden's radical climate goals. The coalition also contends that the EPA's scientific evidence to support the policy, policy change is insufficient. The attorneys general explained that adopting the EPA's overly burdensome regulations would inflict real harm on energy producing states. They write that this proposed rule may require closing existing manufacturing and industrial facilities, and such closures will affect not only those individual businesses, but also the communities that are built around them. Attorney General Cameron is joined by attorneys generals from <clears throat> Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and West Virginia in sending the letter. Now, I want you guys to know, um, they, I'm going to put a link to the letter in, in the description here because it's a very long letter and there's a whole lot of stuff to it that if we sat here and read it, y'all would be like, so we're not going to do that. So I'll put it in a link, but I, I just want to point out, just want to point out real quickly here that the fact that they want to fight against clean air is bothersome to me, especially when you look at some of the states and the cancer rates of um, residents of those states. And the Pennsylvania is not on here, which I'm I'm surprised Pennsylvania didn't sign this after we just found out that Shell Petrochemical that just went up in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, um, is one of the they've already exceeded their years allotment of volatile organic compounds that have been released into the air, and they've only been open for like five months, y'all. In five months, they've released more than they were allowed to release within a year. So I'm surprised that Pennsylvania is not in here going, no, 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 no. We don't want cleaner air. We need this to stay exactly the way it is because we are over here polluting the crap out of our state. Um, So that was just my thought here. But then it says here, uh, what did I want to come back to? Livelihoods of hardworking Americans. Okay. That was the other part. The United States has some of the cleanest air in the industrialized world in the industrialized world being the um, key word there. In areas where they don't have the factories, they have much cleaner air because they don't have the pollutants just poofing out of the top of these uh, smokestacks or whatever, polluting the air. And they don't have the stuff running into their water. They don't have it running into their soil. So they have much cleaner air to begin with because they're not industrialized the way we are. But it says this regulation prioritizes President Biden's radical climate agenda ahead of the livelihoods of hardworking Americans. And I just want to just remind a lot of people, just remind a lot of people that in a lot of these places that do happen to produce the energy, a lot of the workers there are brought in from other countries to work in these places that are technically owned by other countries. Please keep that in mind. The Intel chip plant and um, Shell Petrochemical and uh, all these EV battery places that are coming in, the Vietnamese car dealer, car builder that's coming into North Carolina. There's going to be a lot of foreign bodies in these locations, not just hardworking Americans. So 
they phrase it in a way <clears throat> that makes it seem like the, the EPA is trying to crap on American people. And I don't feel like that's the case personally. Do I believe climate change is a thing and it's overpopulation and whatever else? I believe there's overpopulation in the main cities. I mean, that's where overpopulation is occurring because that's where everybody's trying to move to. There's not overpopulation out in the boonies. That's not a problem. So this whole overpopulation thing, it's all depending on how you word it and how you look at it and how you're willing to um, <clears throat> listen to it told to you, I guess is the right kind of thing. But this whole livelihoods of hardworking Americans, if we only employed Americans and we only built American factories, that would be one thing, but that's not the case here. These same states that are, that are trying to get away from saying yes to the clean air are the same states that are bringing in the foreign companies, Chinese companies, Vietnamese companies, Mexican companies, uh, whatever else from places that are coming over here to build their companies. So I just had a small little, eh, little issue with that. Now, for those of you who do not know who Attorney General Daniel, what's his name, Daniel Cameron is, let me show a little picture here, a little picture of Mr. Daniel Cameron, <clears throat> a little backstory here. It says, Daniel J. Cameron is the 51st Attorney Gener General for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now, this part is interesting, y'all. He is the first African-American independently elected to statewide office in Kentucky's history and the first Republican elected to the Attorney General's office since 1948. So that part I thought was actually interesting. The first Republican since 1948. The rest of the stuff, his background, his history, don't really matter, don't really care. So now let's, really quickly, <clears throat> my next thought is, if they're fighting this clean air, how long until these same states fight clean water? You know, we've talked about this already that the EPA wants there to be stricter levels of water for the PFASs or the puffuses. <laughs> if you just want to turn the letters into words, puffuses, that's how you got to do it. Anyway, not the point. Um, what if they start to fight that? What if they say, no, 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 we can't, we can't be bothered with bringing that level down because then it would hurt all these companies and these hardworking Americans. You're killing more than are working in these places, just FYI. In case anybody's curious on the math here, if you have 100 people working in the factory, but you have a million people drinking the dirty ass water and breathing the dirty ass air, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. So let's really quick, real quick, let's talk about East Palestine, Ohio. We're just going a little skirt skirt up the Ohio River some. Uh, the EPA is under investigation by the EPA basically how it works out. So U.S. Environmental Agency to conduct internal inquiry over Ohio train wreck. This came out this morning at uh, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. they decided they're going to do this. Uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's internal watchdog division is opening an investigation into the handling of the East Palestine train wreck, which caused a toxic disaster in the small Ohio town. Now, here's what this means. <clears throat> the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency so U.S. EPA is launching an internal investigation into the Ohio EPA is how this works out, just so you guys connect those little things there. An agency spokesperson declined to comment on why it is launching the investigation. Um, I could think of probably a hundred dozen reasons. Uh, but a public memo from the EPA Office of Inspector General states that it will conduct interviews, gather data, and analyze a variety of issues, including hazardous waste disposal, air and water monitoring, soil and sediment sampling, and risk communication. Now, let me just, let me just say what's ironic here. They want to conduct interviews, gather data, analyze issues, and all this other stuff. How much do you want to bet this shit comes back faster than anything they've done for the actual people in East Palestine, Ohio? With, I don't know, the sampling of the soil, the actual sampling of the air, which I don't know if you can sample air, but air quality, sampling of the, the, the uh, water, moving all this crap out of East Palestine, Ohio, all that stuff. I bet money this little internal investigation goes much faster than what's happening um, to the residents, but th whatever. Okay. The agency's response to the train crash has drawn intense criticism from the town's residents and public health advocates who say it has failed to fully protect East Palestine from toxic chemicals released from train cars and a controlled, I hate that word controlled, burn of vinyl chloride in the days after the wreck. Again, y'all. It's controlled because they set it on fire, right? That's how they want you to look at it. It's not controlled when it's open, open. You can't control where any of that is going. It's not a controlled burn that kills me. Just, uh, okay. 
Critics say the Joe Biden administration, y'all like how they said the Joe Biden administration, not President Biden's administration, depending on who writes the article depends on how they call him. So, uh, critics say the Joe Biden administration has not been cautious enough in its approach or taken strong enough action against Norfolk Southern, the rail company behind the disaster. Fully agree. Uh, much of the ire over the management of the toxic Rex aftermath was directed at the EPA and right wing pundits and politicians have politicized and racialized the controversy. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't heard anything about race. I know somebody one place said, you know, if, if they weren't lower class, that's what is considered lower class citizens because of the money they make in the area they're in or whatever else, it would be a much bigger deal. But y'all guess what? These things don't happen in the areas of money. They just don't. When was the last time you saw a massive chemical spill in the middle of, I don't know, uh, where is it that the Kardashians lives? Calabasas or something like that. When was the last time you saw it on the street where the, the president on the of the White House, like where the president lives or where <clears throat> the Pentagon is? Like you don't see these things happening in places with money or with national security. It's always in the areas with low population, low income, low education, low whatever, and next to water every single time. It's just so convenient that these things don't happen in areas where there's more money or whatever else. So the, whatever. Um, let's see. Public health advocates praise the announcements of the inspector general's involvement in the investigation is warranted, said Kyla Bennett, a former EPA scientist now with the Public Employees for Environmental Responsibility nonprofit. There are too many unanswered questions and conflicting information. That's, that's what I've been saying. The IG can get to the uh, bottom of how decisions were made to conduct testing and and the way they were and whether that was sufficient. The EPA's uh, inspector general has issued reports critical of the agency over what it has found to be a mishandling of controversies in recent years. Chemical pollution experts and residents have consistently questioned whether the EPA took a robust enough approach to testing water, soil, and air in the days and weeks after the wreck and controlled burn. The answer is no. They have not taken a robust enough approach. Um, residents said they were concerned the EPA told them it was safe to return home too soon, just days after the berm. Yes, way too freaking soon. Uh, many had questions about air quality, especially indoors, and received conflicting messages from state and federal officials about how to protect themselves. Meanwhile, the contractor hired by Norfolk Southern to test indoor air quality has links to the industry and residents told the Guardian they did not trust the results because the testing was not conducted by an independent entity. I wouldn't have trusted that either. The person who made the mess then gets to tell people that no, the mess is fine. That's not how this should ever work at all. Norfolk Southern should not have one single fucking say in any of this. They caused the mess. They should clean it up, but it should not be up to them to tell you if your water is safe, if your air is safe, if your soil is safe, if your home is safe, it's not up to them because of course they're going to do what they need to do to cover their asses. Screw yours. They don't care about that. They're going to cover themselves every single time. The downside here is the Ohio EPA is who stepped in and Ohio wants to protect itself as well because the Ohio EPA is in line with Ohio government, with DeWine and whoever else is there. So of course they want to make sure that they don't spook the residents or um, do something or say something that would then result in negative views of their area, of their state, especially when they're trying to pull in companies to move into Ohio to build EV charging stations and uh, batteries and cars and Intel chips and whatever else. Of course, they don't want them to know that there's an issue. I can guarantee you there are some sort of deals on the table right now with some very large companies, which is why this whole um, results of stuff is dragging ass because they need those deals signed before they go, oh, side note, <laughs> East Palestine is it's screwed. It's, it's bad. It's not good. It's not good at all. They need that to wait till after whatever they're doing is done. Like, I don't know, maybe even the Norfolk Southern um, is supposed to sign their deal with Cincinnati to take over their, their rail. Cincinnati? Yes. Cleveland? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati to take over their railway. Um, they were trying to buy it. They've been leasing it. I'm pretty sure it's Cincinnati. That sounds 100% accurate. Y'all, I did a video before. I don't remember Cincinnati or Cleveland. If you remember, leave a comment. But these things, they're, they could go faster, but they're not going to because they need it to drag ass. That's what I'm trying to say here. That's what I personally believe from what I have read, what I have seen, and the way my brain works. It says here, um, putting the fox in charge of the hen house is never a good idea. Exactly. 
The controlled burn likely created dangerous compounds such as dioxins and chlorinated PAHs that could pose a long-term health threat in the East Palestine area and downwind. Likely created. Did create. There is no, if you burn this, this might happen. No, if you burn this, this will happen. There, it's not a guessing game. It, it, y'all, y'all, these things, <sighs> woosa, breathe. Okay. The EPA for weeks resisted a chorus of calls from chemical pollution experts and residents to test for dangerous compounds. You know why? Because, well, one, they're going to say, well, it wouldn't have been there yet. It needed time <laughs> to like settle into the ground or leach up into the what. I don't know what they're going to say, but they're going to say it needed time. So that's why they couldn't test sooner. Although testing sooner would have made way more sense so they could have a before and after. If they're going to tell you, because I've seen articles where they're saying they could not test sooner because they wouldn't have been readily available. It takes time for the dioxins to dioxidate. I don't know the word here, but it seems to me if that was the case, you would have wanted to test immediately. So you had a base sample to go on so that when you did finally test, what is this? Like, I don't know, six weeks later, you could say, see, look, it matches or see, look, it's lower or see, look, it's only a smidge higher, but here's the problem. They're going to test it and go, shit, this is way higher, so much higher than our base. So you know what they did? They don't have a base. So that when they get these numbers back, they can go, I don't know, could have been this bad before. Again, Shell Petrochemical, less than 16 miles away from East Palestine, Shell Petrochemical already pumping out way too many chemicals into the air and into the soil and water than they're supposed to in an entire year in the first five months. So all of it kind of goes hand in hand. Oh, but it's going to get better in just a second, I promise. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> Residents in East Palestine still say they are getting rashes and their lungs are irritated, said Amanda Kiger, director of Ohio River Valley Organizing, which has been advocating for residents on the ground. Frustration is also aimed at Ohio Governor Mike DeWine's administration's environmental agency. Residents have said financial assistance offered by Norfolk Southern is not enough, which we've talked about, the loopholes you have to be able to jump through to get help from the same people who have made it so that you need help. Uh, the federal government should be providing more relief or forcing the rail company to put more towards assistance. They're not doing their job and everybody knows it, Kiger said. For lack of a better term, it's a, oh, Yahoo News. Okay, for a better, y'all, I'm just reading the article. Don't shoot the messenger. For a lack of a better term, it's all a clusterfuck, but I'm hoping it's a good investigation and thorough. I did not know Yahoo News would let that slide through. I'm so proud of you, Yahoo News. I'm not even gonna lie because that is the correct word to describe this Whole thing. Whole thing. I'm so excited about that. I don't know what that says about me, but that's fine also. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. Here's another one. And then we're going to jump into the thing that I find the most disturbing, the most disturbing. I had a resident of Ohio send me this and I looked into it and I Googled it and I went left and right up and down with it. And I thought to myself, self, this is a huge deal. And Okay, hold on. But first, EPA pressured for transparency around dioxin testing after Ohio derailment. You think? Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency says levels of cancer-causing chemicals called dioxins in East Palestine, Ohio, are similar to typical background levels after a train derailment and chemical burn last month, but it has yet to publicly share specific data about the potent toxic compounds in the soil. The gap between statements from the EPA and data shared with the public has been a source of frustration for some East Palestine residents as the agency tries to both gain community trust, <laughs> good luck, uh, and reassure residents concerned about potent toxins, <laughs> good luck. Uh, as far as dioxins go, this testing isn't coming fast enough, said Jamie Wallace of East Palestine, a community organizer with the River Valley Organizing. We need transparency or people are going to assume. Go ahead and assume. Go ahead and assume that it's bad and start making plans to figure out how to keep yourself safe and get out of there if you possibly can. The EPA has said final results will be available in the coming weeks, according to updates from its Incident Response Center. The agency held a community meeting Thursday in part to discuss questions about soil sampling and its preliminary findings. Environmental groups have criticized how the EPA has communicated about dioxins and say the agency needs to do more to substantiate its claims to earn community trust. Listen. They're going to sit there and tell you all day long, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, no, it's fine, no, it's fine. Prove it. Show it. Show me where it's fine. No, 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 we will. We will just in a couple weeks, in a couple weeks. We're going to, we're going to show you in a couple weeks. 
because hopefully in a couple weeks we've found a way to tweak the answers, to fudge it all, to whatever, or you've forgotten about it, or something disastrous has happened somewhere else and it doesn't matter anymore. Basically what they're saying. I find it outrageous that EPA makes statements like this without providing any data to support it. There's no transparency in this process, process at all. Stephen Lester, a toxicologist and the science director of the Center for Health, Environment, and Justice, an advocacy group based in Virginia, said in an email. Now, um, dioxins we know are chemicals that cause cancer, disrupt the immune system, and cause reproductive issues. They have been at the center of notorious environmental cleanups at from Times Beach, Missouri, to Love Canal, New York, to Mount Dioxin in Pensacola, Florida. Oh, I need to look that one up. Um, dioxins can be created in poorly controlled fires where chlorine is available. Hey, <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Vinyl chloride in a poorly controlled open air fire. Okay, probably creating dioxins over there. Um, sampling and testing for dioxins is expensive. And now we've reached the reason why they haven't done it. And it can be a lengthy process because dioxins are so toxic, laboratories must be able to detect tiny amounts of them. Listen, I said it before and I'll say it 10 bajillion more times. Profits over people. Digging into money to spend money to test for dioxins, that's money. Putting that over the people. The people will just have to wait. We don't want to spend this money. We need somebody to tell us that they're going to reimburse us for this money. We need somebody else to pay for this. We need something. That's why it's not being done. Just so we're all fully, fully aware. It says here, Norfolk Southern, the railroad company responsible for the February 3rd train derailment and subsequent chemical burn, hired a contractor. They hired a contractor to sample soil for dioxins and other compounds. The sampling plan requires a contractor to inspect at least 277 sites within two miles of the derailment for signs of visible ash. The sites with visible ash were, were to be sampled. At least 20% of sites without visible ash were also supposed to be sampled. Critics argue the soil sampling plan should be geographically broader, designed to test the landscape systematically and not centered around visible ash. Oh yeah, and you know what else? They shouldn't have been hired by Norfolk Southern, okay? I wish Mike DeWine would get his at head out of his ass and do something for his state, like, why is this so difficult for him to step in and go, listen, this is what we're doing. It is not up to Norfolk Southern to tell your residents if they're safe or not, because of course they're going to tell them they are when in theory they're not. Plain and simple. I don't understand these people. Uh, <clears throat> Linda Birnbaum, a dioxin expert, tox toxicologist, and former director of the National Institute of Environmental Health Science, said dioxins can be found in particulate pollution much smaller than ash. She said sampling should be brought into account for other locations affected by the cloud of smoke from the chemical fire. Listen, we're going to move away from this because, oh, no, 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 we're going to, I didn't see this part. At least 12 residents within 25 miles of the derailment have sought testing through Simple Lab, a company designed to connect people to certified laboratories, said Johnny Pujo, the company's CEO. The turnaround time for such testing is about 18 days, and each test costs about $600. No results have been returned yet. 18 days. This thing happened February 3rd. It is March 28th. That's plenty of time to get stuff turned around. But here's the thing. $600. Do you know what the residents of East Palestine probably don't have just sitting around willy-nilly ready to pick it up and throw it around like, like it's nothing? $600, y'all. You know who should be paying for this? Norfolk Southern. Norfolk Southern should give every single, every single resident in East Palestine, Ohio, and Hell, as far as they go, the, if somebody over in Beaver County wants it, do it. If somebody 75 miles away, a different direction wants one, Norfolk Southern should have to pay for it for these people to go get tested just to make sure they're safe. That's how I feel about it. Mike DeWine should be on their ass to make them do it too, in my own a personal opinion. So here's my question. Why can I pee on a stick that I can get from the Dollar Tree for literally $1.25 now and in three minutes know if I'm pregnant or not? Why can a... Um, business send an employee in for a drug test and have results within 24 hours on if they're on any kind of stuff, whether it's weed, PCP, LSD, fentanyl, is that the thing? Whatever, all these things. Why can we do all of those things? But the EPA in these places can't figure out how to get a, uh, like a soil sample back in a timely manner. You're going to tell me that with all the chemicals and all the possibilities and issues that go along with these chemicals, that out of how smart all these engineers and biologists and chemists are, they haven't figured out how to get a return sample faster than 18 days. 
Mm -mm. I don't buy it. Not in the least do I buy it. Not whatsoever at all. Just not at all. I don't buy it at all. Just so you know. So I wanted to point out really quickly with the um, Kentucky issue with the barge, I was waiting to make this video because according to them, they were going to have an update at one o'clock on exactly what was happening. I don't know who's one o'clock they were talking about, but it is almost three o'clock now and there is still no update on anything. I have not seen, I cannot figure out who the barge company was. I have not been able to figure out where the soybean oil, corn and methanol were going. I haven't been able to figure out where it came from. So that part is bothersome to me that there is literally nothing, no information provided along with this. Um, and I wanna know exactly what it was and where it was going and where it was coming from. Not to, hold on. Let me, let me, let me look this up. Stay with me while I type. Cause why not? Uh, I forgot to mention, okay. Contractor will not treat wastewater from East Palestine and Baltimore after mayor denies the permit. So clean harbors announced Tuesday, late Tuesday, that it will not treat contaminated wastewater from the train to realm in East Palestine, Ohio and Baltimore after pushback from local lawmakers. Now remember clean Harbor has, um, a lot of their stock is owned by Vanguard and Vanguard owns the majority of Norfolk Southern. So I wonder if at some point in time they realize who they is that maybe this was a little too much double dipping and it was going to look really bad or maybe t people were putting things together and they found out about it and they're like, we can't do this. I'm not saying me, I'm just saying, but then, so here's the question. Where does the water go? Why is there still 675,000 675,000 gallons of dirty, dirty, chemical tainted crap water from East Palestine just floating around, just floating around. Y'all do understand the high possibility that that 675,000 gallons of water gets broken down into smaller portions that doesn't need to be told to anybody. And those are going to be sent out to numerous, numerous locations. If it's under like 5,000 gallons of water, we did this before and I don't remember the numbers. If it's under a certain amount, it doesn't have to be told to state officials or whatever else. It just has to be told to whoever's taking it. So what if, if Baltimore goes, no, we're not taking 675,000 and then another city city goes, Hey, for this price, we'll take 10,000. And another city goes, you pay us this much. We'll take this much because you know, money, it all comes down to money. So where is it going to go? We have to keep an eye on that because that's important to me. Where the 675,000 gallons of water is now going to go if Baltimore will not take it. And what is up with Philly water is Anybody out there getting the Amber Alert style messages about drink the water, don't drink the water, drink the water, don't drink the water? Or have we just, has that just stopped also? Because I couldn't find anything on it this morning, just out of curiosity. Um, listen, I get a little irate and a little ticked off and a little pissed off uh, for the people of not just East Palestine. Oh, y'all, I almost forgot. Look, that's what my brain does. I get, I get sidetracked. Okay, so listen because my brain is thinking about the people and I'm, I'm ticked off. So this is what I need you to know. Where is this? Oh, it didn't come through on this one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all don't leave. Where do I find this? So I downloaded this thing that here it is. Okay. So pull up, pull up. All right. So I want to show you this because this is extremely important. You guys ready? Is this the first one? Yeah. Okay. So there's two different things. This, this Nikki from Ohio sent me this and I want you guys to, cause this is so flipping important. It's ridiculous. So she sent me this thing. Look, it's called Ohio moves. Do you see this right here? Okay. So this right here, this is to, um, in Campbell, uh, Cam Campbell, Ohio. It says, we're inviting you to participate in the Ohio moves transportation study, the Ohio department of transportation. Wait, when did she get this? This was, um, Oh, is there a date? I don't see a date. Maybe it's on the next one. No, no, no. Okay. Whatever. So it says the, da, 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 da. the Ohio department of transportation conducts this study to collect accurate information about your day to day travel throughout Eastern Ohio, Eastern Ohio, where East Palestine is located in Columbiana County, right there on the border of Pennsylvania, right across the street from the Beaver County shell petrochemical plant. Okay. Please keep these things in mind. By taking part, you'll help us understand how local roads, highways, public transportation, bike lanes, and sidewalks are used today and where future improvements may be needed. We want to hear from you, even if you don't travel often. Then why do you 
need to hear. Uh, your input will have a big impact because only a limited number of households have been invited to participate in the survey. Follow the instruction below to sign up today. Now I need you guys to see this. This is hard to show you, but I think you can see. They have a QR code that you can scan. They have a app that you can download, and then you have a way to do this on your computer also. Here's where, here's where it gets interesting. I'm gonna read you this whole thing because to me this is extremely important, and I'm going to explain to you why. As soon as I read you everything, you're gonna be like, holy jolly. So, Ohio moves frequently asked questions. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> you're not ready for this. Um, this is really small. Okay, what is this study all about? We want to learn how, when, where, and why people travel in and around Eastern Ohio. We're asking you to log your travel to help us understand regional transportation patterns. By participating, you can help us plan for future transportation improvements to your community. Why should I participate? Your participation ensures that households like yours are represented in our regional transportation plans. Your input has a big impact because only a limited number of households are invited to participate. What if I don't travel much? Uh, any amount of travel, including no travel, will help us improve regional transportation planning. Don't forget that short trips, such as walking the dog, count too. What if my transportation habits uh, during the day, during the study, aren't my typical habits? Uh, there's no problem. We still encourage you to participate. We'll also ask about your typical travel habits, how your travel has changed over the past year, and how you think you'll travel in the future. How was I selected to participate? Invited households were selected at random from Eastern Ohio. I was invited to use the study smartphone app, R Move. How does it work? This is where it's good. After you download R Move and sign up, R Move will log your trips for one week while you go about your daily life. Each day you'll be asked to complete a short daily survey about your travel habits as well as a trip survey about each trip you make. How, what do I get for participating? You will receive a gift card once all the members of your house, household have reported their travel and completed their surveys. All of the members of your household. Households that report their travel using the smartphone app, our move, will re re receive a $20 gift card uh, per participating adult. Households that report their travel online or by calling in will receive a single $10 gift card. So right there, you know you're going to want to get the app because it pays more, obviously. How much time does it take to participate? It takes about 10 minutes to sign up for the study. Once you sign up, we'll give you instructions for logging your travel and completing the study. Households, households that log their travel for seven days in their smartphone app, our move, will spend about five to 10 minutes each day reporting their travel. Households that log into their travel online or over the phone will spend about 10 minutes per household member reporting their travel one day. How is my personal privacy protected? We are committed to protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and security of our personal inf of your personal information. We take this responsibility seriously. Our privacy policy is intended to help you understand how we collect and safeguard your information, and then you can read some privacy documents on ohiomoves.org. Who is sponsoring this study? This study is sponsored by the Ohio Department of Transportation. Now, what I want you to see, you see those dark boxes there? Those are all of the counties that are participating or that they want to participate in this. So you've got... Can I just, nope, I thought I could just <laughs> zoom in like that. Um, not a touch screen. So you have Ashtabula, Trumbull, Mahoning, Columbiana, or East Palestina is, side note, Jefferson, Carroll, and Stark. Now here's why this is important. We don't, we don't, we don't need this anymore. Here's why this is important to me, and it should be to you. I said before, and I'll say it again. There is something planned for that area. They've already put pipelines in there to take um, stuff to Shell Petrochemical, ethanol and things like that. There's the Falcon pipeline and there's another pipeline that I can't remember the name of. It starts with a G, but I don't remember what it is. They've already got pipelines going in there, right? You also know that Intel is moving in, uh, Intel chip plant. There's also an EV, something with EV moving in that, again, I can't remember. My brain can only hold so much information. Um, there's a lot of stuff moving in there. And then East Palestine happening and that land in theory being deemed uninhabitable, uninhabitable or the residents not wanting to be there. The, the housing prices have already fallen 20% if you take a look. The housing, the market value there is already going down. I, I, to me, this downloading an app and having it track you for $20? Really? Track your every movement for a week for the government for $20? Mm, nope, not happening. But they want to see 
how many residents actually stay in those areas versus leaving those areas. <clears throat> There's a lot of people who live in areas and willingly drive an hour to two hours a day to get to work inside a city or something like that. So I wonder if they wanna see how many of those people leave those areas because then they'll know that those areas can be used for something else. They can use them to bring in a Vietnamese company, a Chinese company, a Mexican company, a Dutch company, maybe an American company, although I don't believe that'll be the case because foreign companies will pay more and there's tax credits and stuff like that. So whatever. Um, I feel like it's all interconnected. Can I prove it? No, I cannot prove any of any, any of that. I can just show you the things that are factual. Like that is a factual letter, East Palestine, Ohio, and the train derailment and the subsequent just shit show is factual. It's factual that Shell Petrochemical has already gone way past their allotted VOCs for the year in the first five months. It's factual that these other companies are moving in and it's factual that Ohio is part of the 19 other states that don't want there to be an air quality. Uh, change by the EPA. And the next thing you know, they're not going to want a water quality change by the EPA. So all these things to me go hand in hand. And it just lets you know that in my personal opinion, being in the Eastern part of Ohio is not where I would want to be if I could possibly not be there. Same thing with the Western part of Pennsylvania, because them little jokers butt right up to each other in case you didn't know. Uh, I, I definitely think if you're in that area, you just need to be very diligent in what is going on around you and keep a really close eye on everything and pay attention. Any of these kind of letters that come into you, any phone calls that you get, any text alerts that you get from your city, anything that's in your newspaper that talks about stuff like, you know, hey, how, how much would it cost you to relocate or how much do you like living here and how much would you rather live somewhere else and how do you feel about Chinese companies coming in and taking over? Like, things like that, pay attention to them because I feel like there's going to be something big happening in that area of East, uh, not just East Palestine, Ohio, but Eastern Ohio based off of this, how do you travel? How do you move letter? That's very concerning to me. Just, it's very concerning to me. So y'all, huh. okay. It's hump day, my dudes. That's a weird way to spend a Wednesday, but it's hump day, my dudes. Um, I hope you guys have a really good rest of your day. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Kentucky barge uh, situation, trying to figure out who, what little tugboat manufacturer or company, or whatever was pulling the, the barges and, you know, effed up at 2 a.m. and hit something and then all this other stuff. And if there really is going to be some sort of methanol leak, again, there's a huge push for pipelines whether it's uh, trains derailing and chemical spilling, things being spilled into the water, barges unbarging, and possible chemical spills. Uh, unbarging isn't a word, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I'm just saying, all of these things that happen are a bigger push for when they go, you know what, we should just put pipelines anywhere. Then the residents go, you know what, yes, I'm tired of worrying about stuff spilling into my water. I'm tired of worrying about stuff in the air. Put all that shit underground and call it done. I'm just saying it all, it all goes together. So just pay attention to everything. So that is that my dudes, 47 minutes. Y'all, I can't do a 30 minute video to save my friggin' life, but it's okay. You either like it or you don't. Either way, <laughs> I still love you. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your Wednesday and I will see you on the flip side, my dudes.